right, we're going to look at another word problem here. So this is a motion problem. We're given a description here of this object, a mass of 10 kilograms released from rest, 400 meters above the ground. We do have a force due to air resistance that we need to account for in our differential equation. So this is not ideal motion with no air resistance. So we do need to account for that. Uh, and then we want to determine the equation of motion of the object and when it will hit the ground. So we're going to start by writing a differential equation that models this motion and we'll solve the differential equation to actually answer the question that it asks us to do here. This problem is similar to one of the questions in your homework and so I'm going to make some choices here that uh, are aligned with what they will expect you to do in the homework. One of those is what I'm going to use for my gravity constant. So you might occasionally use g equals 9.8 meters per second or maybe negative 9.8 meters per second depending on which way you decide is going to be the positive direction. Uh, we're going to use g equals 9.81 meters per second squared. I think I said meters per second, but meters per second squared. So we're going to use 9.81. That's what they do in your homework, uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. We're also going to assume that the positive direction is down. And we're going to actually let the initial position of the object be at zero. And so when it ends up at ground level, because it starts out 400 meters above the ground, when it ends up at ground level, it will end up at 400 meters. So these are assumptions they actually make in your homework. These are all choices that you could make. You could decide that you want zero to be ground level and the positive direction to be up. But this is what they do in the homework, and so I'm just going to do the problem this way. Um, all right, so we know that we have kind of as the basic model for the differential equation, force equals mass times acceleration. So where's the differential equation? Well, acceleration is a rate of change. So we've got mass times acceleration as a rate of change is rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So that's our total force, and then that is going to be equal to all of the forces that are acting on our mass once it's released. So we've got the force due to gravity, mg, that's the mass times acceleration due to gravity, and then acting in the direction opposite motion, so that would be in the negative direction, we've got the air resistance. So we'll have a minus, and then whatever letter we want to use for the constant, the homework uses the letter b for the constant of proportionality times the velocity. So this is the air resistance, which we're assuming is proportional to the velocity. Right, so this is gravity acting in the positive direction, and then the force due to air resistance acting in the direction opposite that, and b is our constant of proportionality, uh, which they gave us, 20 newton seconds per meter. So here's our differential equation. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange this, divide through by m, rearrange this, and plug in our constants so that we've got one we can work with and solve here. Uh, so when I divide through by m, I'll have dv dt equals, this will just be g, and we're going to use 9.81 minus, and then our b, our constant of proportionality is given, that's 20, and that will be over the mass, because I'm dividing through by m, which is 10, so 20 over 10 will be 2v, and this object is released from rest, so the initial velocity is zero. Our initial position is also going to be zero. We'll use that in another differential equation that we'll end up solving. So here's our first differential equation. We're actually going to have two differential equations here. Um, remember that velocity is also a rate of change. So velocity can be thought of as dx dt. If x is our position, I've used x here for position and then this would be a second derivative. But since we're only solving first order differential equations so far, we're going to solve this as a first order differential equation and then we'll rewrite another differential equation in terms of x and solve that one as well. All right, so this differential equation is linear. It is also separable. So you can choose to solve it either way. I'm going to treat this as a linear differential equation and solve it that way. So I'll add this 2v term to both sides. Okay. 
And then I need to find my integrating factor that I'm going to multiply through by. So our book likes to use rho for that. E to the integral of this coefficient function, so 2 dt. So e to the 2t. So I'm going to multiply through by that e to the 2t to put that in the form where we're ready to solve that. Um, so we'll have e to the 2t times dv dt. I'll go ahead and write this step out. Sometimes I skip this step. But, uh, plus 2 e to the 2t v equals, and then I am notoriously bad about remembering to multiply the other side of the equation by my integrating factor, so be sure you remember to do that. I sometimes skip this step and go ahead and rewrite the left side, though, as what we know should come next. Uh, so the whole point with this integrating factor is that you've then created a product rule derivative here. So this left-hand side of the differential equation is the derivative with respect to t of e to the 2t times v. And a good way to check that you've set up this part of the linear differential equation correctly so far is just to double check that. If you do product rule on this, differentiating with respect to t, you do indeed get that. Um, but then the next step would be you want to integrate both sides of that differential equation with respect to t. So uh, let's see, let's go up over here to finish that. So we'll have e to the 2t times v on the left side because the integration and the differentiation undo each other. And on the right side here, we'll end up with 9.81 over 2. I'm going to go ahead and simplify that just so that we have easier calculations later. So 9.81 over 2. I would probably mess that up if I tried to do that in my head. Uh, so we'll have 4.905 e to the 2t plus c. All right, so this is an implicit solution. Uh, and I do have a, an initial value, so I can find my c. I'm going to go ahead and divide through by e to the 2t so that I get an explicit solution, and then I'll find my c from there. Uh, so v is 4.905, and my e to the 2t's will cancel, plus c e to the negative 2t. When I put in my initial condition, v of 0 equals 0, we'll use that to find c. Uh, you can maybe do that in your head. You'll have 0 equals 4.095 plus c. So c will be negative 4.095. All right, so this is the solution for the velocity function. But in the original problem, it actually asked us to find the equation that describes the motion. So we're really wanting to find an equation that gives x as a function of t. So we've solved the first differential equation, but that then generates another differential equation. Remember we talked about at the beginning that v, velocity, is rate of change of position with respect to time. So here we have another differential equation. This one is even easier to solve than the first one, though. All right, so this is the differential equation that describes position as a function of time. And again, we're going to use x of 0 equals 0. So we let the position, starting position be 0 and ending position be 400. Uh, this is very easy to solve. This is one of those kinds that you actually solved in calculus 1, uh, where you're just undoing the derivative. So you're just going to integrate both sides with respect to t. You might call it a separable differential equation if you want to think about it that way. Uh, so when you integrate both sides with respect to t, you'll get x equals 4.905t, integrating this first term with respect to t. And then for this next term, I'll have minus 4.0905 divided by negative 2. So I'm using my scratch paper here so I don't mess up that calculation. Uh, let's see, um, 2.45 2, 5, e to the negative 2t, and plus c again. 
Um, all right, so being careful there about the minus sign, and we're going to end up dividing by negative 2. That's why we end up with a, a plus right here. Okay, so that is our solution. I can use my initial condition to find my value for c here. So when I put in uh, t equals 0 and x equals 0, uh, we'll have 0 equals 0 plus 2.4525 plus c. So you'll get c equals negative 2.4525. All right, so there is our equation that describes the motion. So that's one of the things that we were asked to do, find the equation that describes the motion of the object as a function of time. So that would give us meters as a function of time. Uh, and then the other thing that it asks us to do is determine when the object hits the ground. So we are supposed to find the t value when the object is at 400. All right, so in order to do that last part here, we're going to put in x equals 400 and uh, we're going to solve for t. Okay, so you might get to this point and then get stuck, which uh, maybe is normal. This is not possible to be solved algebraically because of the t in this linear term and the t in this exponential function term. Um, so you can't actually solve this algebraically. So there are two things you could do at this point. One is to do a numerical approximation. You can use your calculator and determine t value for when this function, that's the right side here, is equal to 400 to as many, de many decimal places of accuracy as you need. Or another kind of interesting thing that you could do on this particular problem, it won't work on every problem, but on this particular problem, you might notice that when t gets very big, very big at all, even past about one second, this term, because of this exponential function here, gets very, very small. So when t gets very big at all, this middle term gets very close to zero. And so if all I'm looking for is an approximation for my solution to this algebraic equation, I can say that we have 400 is approximately equal to 4.905t, treating this term as 0, and then minus 2.4525. This equation is easy to solve algebraically. You can add 2.4525 to both sides and divide by 4.905. Uh, and whichever way you do that, whether you use a numerical approximation on a calculator or a computer to solve this equation I've written here below the box, or you solve this equation here, which is exploiting this fact that this one term can really be neglected because it gets so close to zero so quickly, you should get the same answer for this one, uh, to two decimal places anyway. So uh, I just solved this last one, but I did verify that I get the same thing to at least two decimal places of accuracy when I do a numerical solution of this one. Uh, so what I got was t is approximately 82.05 seconds. All right, so a lot of interesting stuff there. One is that we didn't really start out with a differential equation. We had to write our own differential equation. So thinking about the forces acting on the object, solving that differential equation. But then the other idea that was important here is that the first differential equation we solved isn't really, we weren't quite done yet. We really needed to then treat that as a differential equation and solve another one in order to answer the question. So part of the goal here, again, is just paying attention to what's in the problem, thinking about what you know about rates of change and um, how you might interpret that in terms of an equation and how you might analyze that. So it's really all about paying attention to what these symbols mean. And so thinking through the meaning of, of all of these expressions that you have here so that you can get the answer to the question. All right, so like I said, this is like one of the homework problems. So if you haven't tried that one in the homework set yet, you might go ahead and do that. 
and then you can watch some other videos.